Hey, it's me, Kat, and I'm back. Welcome back. I am continuing with my Freaky Friday series, and today I wanted to talk about uh, Elizabeth Short, otherwise known as the Black Dahlia. Um, the last week I did a, a video on Elisa Lam, and she spent some time at the Cecil Hotel of course and um because that's where her awful ordeal happened um but i believe that the very beginning of uh betty short's uh descent into what happened actually started at the cecil hotel um, and the reason for this is because i have had nightmares since i was a little girl um, hmm, <laughs> about being in a, uh, a bar with a lot of smoke, uh, and I'm smoking a cigarette. When I look down, I can see black curl in my hair. So I know that I have black hair. And I'm having some wine, and I'm chatting with a, a friend of mine, a girlfriend of mine and a man that we just met at the bar and he's very funny and he's telling all sorts of jokes and they're a little bit on the morbid side but we think that they're funny and I take a sip of wine and um, I'm enjoying my wine and I grab a peanut and I pop it in my mouth and I start chewing and I realized that one of my teeth is falling out. So I'm like, oh my goodness. So I took a little bit of a sip of wine. Sorry, my dog is right next to me here and he is shifting this over. You wanna be on camera more. <laughs> so I, in my dream, I run into the bathroom and it's one of those um, you know, dreams that we have sometimes with the tooth falling out. And I remember looking it up and I remember talking about it with a friend of mine years ago and he was just like, oh, that's so strange. Um, no, the whole thing about being in a bar with a smoke and biting on a peanut and your tooth falling out, that seems so detailed. Um, and I said, well, you know, and I, I was, and you know, I'm young when I'm having this dream. I'm like six six years old and um my friend would be say you know well that's just not normal you're six you shouldn't be dreaming about being an older per person with smoking cigarettes and all of this and i said yeah but i like all those kinds of movies from the the 30s and the 40s so you know there's a right some of my go-to favorites and um and he said you were just so strange and so weird I don't get you and um <laughs> not a lot of people got me especially when I started talking about this dream that we're linked that I'm linked arms with a friend of mine and a very strange man making all sorts of jokes being, you know, I'm a magician, I'm a mortician, it rhymes, and he's just going on, and he's obviously drunk. Um, but, you know, that has been one of the things that I remember joking about when I was younger, and people always thought, okay, you were just so strange, what is wrong with you? You're not a mortician, and you're not a magician. Well, you're a magician's assistant. Right, and in my dream, it's saying, you're a magician's assistant now. This is your segue into stardom. <laughs> you know, and we're, we've been drinking too much, and uh, next thing I know, I fall and trip, and I'm down and I passed out. 
It's as if there was something in my wine that caused me to pass out. And, um, you know how dreams are very segmented and very, you know, surreal and kind of strange? Well, that's how everything felt for me. Um, so I see one of those long lights dangling from a ceiling, very high ceiling, and it's on like a chain. And the man, you know, is making all sorts of gestures with his arms and he hits the light and the light goes back and forth and back and forth. And in my dream, I'm stuck down onto like this metal thing that like spins around because he's spinning it around and I can't get up because I'm strapped down. And, the, and as he's spinning me around, there's some strange equipment in the room and I can't figure out what any of it is. There is um, the sound of what sounds like, you know, a, a drill when you're good at the dentist and they're working on your teeth. It sounds like that. And I just all of a sudden have this piercing pain going through my abdomen. And just, you know, this feeling of getting woozy and not being able to handle it and passing out. Strange, not normal. And to top it all off, he is playing um, music lightly in the background, and the, the he's playing opera, and it's Tosca. Um, and this I know because, of course, I've grown up with father who directs opera. So I recognize the music. Anyway, um, so it's all very disjointed and weird and surreal, but very powerful and very frightening all at the same time for me. So let me talk a little bit about Elizabeth Short and explain it if you haven't already watched a video that's talked about her life. She grew up in uh, Massachusetts in Medford and she uh, was brought up by her mother. Her mother was a, a single mom raising her children. Her father had um, left and when he did, he left his car near a bridge, uh, making it look like he had actually committed suicide. But in fact, years later, they found out that he didn't actually kill himself. He was actually living in Los Angeles and had a house in Santa Barbara that apparently he was trying to sell. So Elizabeth uh, decided to go and spend time with her father. So she went to Santa Barbara, um, tried to help her dad out, but he, you know, is getting older and he was upset that his daughter even found him and he didn't want to even deal with any of his family, much less a daughter. Uh, but then he realized that his daughter could be helpful because he was getting older and he wasn't able to take care of himself very well. So he was actually kind of happy about the fact that his daughter was there to actually be able to make him meals and to be able to have her to be there for him. Um, now the interesting thing is, is in some of my dreams, um, I'm actually preparing food for someone. I'm wearing these beautiful, you know, vintage outfits with the pencil skirt and the cute, um, a cute white top 
and being very, putting, having an apron on and being very careful not to spill anything on myself because I'm supposed to go to dinner with a gentleman and being very excited and very, being very happy about it. And, you know, just taking a little bit of, you know, a carrot or something out of the father's food and popping it in my mouth, but having to go like this because my teeth weren't good. <laughs> you know, and the interesting thing is, is at that time, I did a little bit of research on this. Um, and even one of my um, friends, um, her mom actually told me that when people's teeth were falling out, they used to stick them back in using wax or um, gum. And um, in my dreams, I have a really pretty little vanity and I have my little black journal there that I write my name down in a bunch of times and I don't want to be called Elizabeth. I actually want to be called Betty and I'm writing it out as B-E-T-T-E. -E. Um, so, and that is something that I, I don't know if that can be um, corroborated or not. It would be really interesting if it could be. Um, but also in my dreams, as I'm looking at the vanity, I have a candle right there and I'm pouring it, the wax, into like a little teeny tiny little dish. And I take my tooth and I stick it in there and wait for it to cool down just a tiny bit and cram it back up into my mouth. I know, my dreams are very... <laughs> Um, but it would be really interesting to, um, find out if any of these dreams are actually pulling that spirit into, you know, my subconscious to dream about her or if it's something else. And I have a few people who think that it's something else at this point because when we get into some of my other dreams, they become so detailed, right? Down to, you know, having this man hovering over me while I'm strapped down to this um, weird metal, um, what are they called? Gurneys, maybe? I think, and being spun around and with the light going back and forth and back and forth, it just, it gives me a, such a, 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 it's a, it was a nightmare. It was a recurrent nightmare that I had when I was a child. And I would wake up with a start and I would go running into my parents' room and I would have to sleep in their room. And my parents were getting really frustrated and they didn't understand what was happening to me. And all I knew is I was terrified and scared. And the weird thing is, um, we lived in this beautiful old farmhouse and we had done a lot of work on it. And I had, my parents had made a really cool bed for me that was built into the wall. Um, and I loved that because it gave me more room to be able to dance around in my room and have fun um, whenever I had my friends over so we could like seriously have a dance party in there if I wanted to. <laughs> a lot of floor space um but the weird thing is is one of my friends got me on a kick of all these uh songs from the 40s and we were singing them and then uh, i would hear um people singing other songs that i didn't know because the songs that i knew were you know basically a comedian and i his name is totally out of my head right now, but it was Mersey Dotes and Goats, you know, it's Little Dozy Divey or something like that. Mersey Dotes, Dozy Oats, and Little Goatsy Divey. I think that's how it's supposed to go. <laughs> you know, so it's all these you know, little um, snippets of songs and things from the 40s. And so I would actually hear people singing songs that I never knew 
and and then I would start singing those songs and my parents would be like well, where, did, where did you learn that from and I would say oh I heard it in my dreams or I I heard someone singing it and they would say well, where did you hear someone singing it and I would point to a part in the house and they just look at me like our, our daughter is just what's what is happening here <laughs> I don't get it she must have gotten a hold of you know she, my mom asked me did you get a hold of one of your father's old records you know and I said no I said I heard it and I couldn't quite understand why I had heard them and I um yeah, you know, all a little a little strange for a six year old to be singing. Um, well, maybe not so weird for me to be singing Mr. Sandman. That was one of my favorite songs. But to also be singing "Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree" with anyone else but me, uh, <laughs> you know, things like that. that you know, a six year old just who. You know, teaches a six-year-old these kinds of songs, right? And, um, but I was thinking, though. <laughs> uh, and I remember waking up one day when I was older in the house. And it's so funny because what I woke up to was a voice saying, take a look at those tomatoes, right? And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> not not exactly you know set on my alarm to say take a look at those tomatoes but of course when I went out to the herb garden I realized that there were some tomatoes growing in the herb garden and they looked amazing and I was like so weird <laughs> uh, <laughs> right more you want to see a more What were you dreaming about last night, Amor? Running. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you should only pet me. And every time I try to film one of these things, something happens where there's like, Fluff like fly through or something. <laughs> right. Oh, I don't know if my dog is cute. They do. So, anyway, back to this um, interesting phenomenon here. So, I'm wondering if there are some answers in my dreams that can help to solve this bizarre case. And I'm wondering if anyone else has had any uh, bizarre dreams or thoughts or psychic gifts that can um, shed some light on some of this. And that would be really fascinating to hear other people's opinions as well. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you wouldn't mind hitting on the, the like button or the subscribe button. I'm worth it. Hit the like button, please. <laughs> I'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.